So in this part of the tutorial, we will be adding some buttons to the screen. Um, in the last tutorial or in the last video, we left off where we were able to uh, place towers by clicking on the tiles like this. But now we would like to be able to um, place our towers by clicking a button and then place a specific type of tower. And we would also want to be able to avoid this from happening. So you can see here, this tower here is overlapping the other tower. And that's not uh, intentional at all and it's not very good because it looks like this tower up here standing on top of this. So we'll have to do something from our script so that this tower will get in front of this one. So that's that's what we're going to do in this video. First of all, we need to create our buttons on the screen. Um, and to create the buttons, we need to click on create in our hierarchy, go to UI, and then we can simply just uh, let's try to select the button here. So when we have done that, it creates a button outside the screen. And right now you can see that it spawned outside my screen. If it doesn't spawn on your screen, just move it on, on screen here so you can see it a little better. As you can see, it also created a canvas and maybe you already know these basic things about the UI, but I feel like I need to explain these few things if you haven't worked with the UI before, maybe you you are not that, um, you, you don't know that much about it though. When I created the button, it created a canvas and it created an event system. The event system handles all the navigation and all the clicks and stuff on, on the different buttons. And we also have a canvas. And as you can see, the canvas is a parent object of the button. And that's because all UI elements in Unity needs to be under a canvas to be rendered on the scene. So if I take this button here and move it outside the canvas, it will disappear. So it's not rendered anymore because it's not a child object of our canvas anymore. So we always need to make sure that our UI elements are child objects of our canvases, of a canvas. You can have more canvases in your screen, uh, in your game, um, but one UI element always needs to be under one canvas. And maybe you need more canvases if you need a canvas for UI elements in game and another one for menus and so on. But for now, we need this one canvas. So we are going to create a panel um, that contains all our buttons. Um, so we need to right click and click UI. We right, right click on the canvas, sorry. <clears throat> and we click UI and then we select an image. So this image here is going to be our placeholder for all our buttons. So we actually need to remove the image because we only need the rect transform on it. So we can right click on the image part and remove component. And then we can rename the image here to tower panel. This is going to be our panel for all our towers. So I would like my tower panel to be in the top right side or in the right side. You can always put it in the left or the bottom or where you want it. But I'm going to put it in the top right. And then I'm going to take the panel and expand it so that it goes from top to bottom just for now. And then I'm going to take the um, pivot point here. If I select the tower panel, you'll see that on the rect transform, there's a pivot point. And that one decides uh, the position of uh, this element regardless of um, what's it called, the resolution. Because the pivot point here can be put in the top right corner. And as you can see here, there are four anchors here when you do that in the top right corner. And each anchor belongs to, a, um, belongs to one of the corners here. So the top right wide anchor here this angle up here belongs to this corner um, and this angle over here belongs to this and this angle in bottom belongs to the bottom uh, um, corner here. So the distance between these angles and the points on the edges here always needs to be the same regardless of the resolution. So now when we have put it in the top right uh, uh, side here of the canvas, well then the distance between this corner here will always be the same no matter what resolution you are in. So it will always be, um, it will always sit in the right side of the canvas. So no matter what resolution your button will all, buttons will always uh, line up here instead of being in the middle of the screen when you switch to a larger resolution and so on. So this avoids, uh, this makes sure that our things will stay in the top, you know, in the right side. Okay. Um, yeah, we need to set up some few more things, but I think I want to show you how that works instead of just explaining it. Um, yeah, 
So what else? We have our tower panel and then we have our button. Our button needs to be a child object of our tower panel. And right now you can see my button is just simply sitting here. Um, and I need a few more buttons as well. And to align my buttons, I need to add a new um, component to my tower panel. Just to make sure because I could yeah, duplicate this button here and move it a little down. Take another button and move it down like this and then check the distance but that's not very accurate at all at all and these will have different distances and everything depending on the resolution and such so to handle all this force so we don't have to place our buttons ourselves we will create something called you know, we will add something called a um, grid layout group so we can click on the tower panel and click add component and then write grid and there you have it we have a grid layout group here when you do add that group, you'll see the button will take another shape and everything and be added to the top here. And if I right click on the button and press duplicate, you'll see the next one will be placed underneath it and duplicate again and duplicate one more time. So you see now we have all our buttons like this uh, down the line here and they have the same distance. Besides our buttons, we will also have to add our lives on top of them. But for now, we only add the buttons. So we can call this first one a storm button. That's the storm tower. We can call this one frost button. And this one we can call fire button. And this one we can call poison button. So now we have all our buttons. We can actually change some things here to make it uh, fit our needs better. For example, we can say, we can open the padding here and say, well, we need some padding in the right side, say five. So there's a little padding on, on the side here. Um, what else we can say that we need to set the cell size. We can say 70 and 80 to change the size of these. Um, and we need the start corner of a lift and vertical here. Start axis is vertical. Um, child alignment. Let's say lower lower right. There we go. Because then we can have our live up here and lives up here in the top. And constraints is flexible. That's fine. You can also say um, top upper upper right if you want your health down here instead. But I'm going to say lower right to make sure that my health is on, on top here. Anyway, these buttons doesn't look very nice uh, right now. So we'll have to change the sprites. So you can click on the storm button. And then you can click source image and then you can write storm and as you can see we have we should have some buttons actually it's faster for us to actually go to the sprites folder and go to ui and then there's something called tower buttons then click on the storm and take the tower button for storm uh, which is this one i think and drag it onto the ui sprite here and then we can do the same for frost click on frost find the frost tower and drag it onto UI sprite and we can do the same fire take the fire tower drag it onto UI sprite and poison and then we take the poison tower there and drag it onto so now we have all our buttons um, set up here as you can see on each of the button it's written button on them with some black dark text text here we don't really need that text so we can actually open all of them and delete the text for now. We will need some text later, um, but we'll add that when we add prices. There's no need to have the text uh, laying around and, and taking up space. Um, what else? Right now, I actually think the buttons are pretty close aligned here. So I would like to make some space between them. So you can click on the tower panel and then say spacing Y. We can set that to 10. So they have some more space in between them here. Um, and we can maybe also set some space in the bottom here, five, for example, to move them a little up so the poison tower isn't like just on the line here. You can always like play around with these values, set them exactly as you want them. These are just the values that I used for the game, um, which I think looks best. You can always put them exactly as you want them. Okay, one more thing. If I maximize now and play, you'll see that the buttons get very, very small here. 
and that's not what we just saw here when we're playing the game uh, when we didn't play the game sorry um so we have to do something so that we actually have the same ratio because when i set it up here i expected the buttons to be this big because i set them up with those values and everything so it fit but when i play the game it's totally different and maybe if i play on a mobile device they will take up way more space for example half the screen and that's not intended at all so we have to click on our canvas and then there is a UI scale mode here and it says constant pixel size, which means that no matter what um, screen size you're on, these will always take up the same amount of pixels. So let's say it takes up 100 by 100 pixels. Well, 100 by 100 pixels is a lot on a mobile device, for example, but it's not a lot on a full screen on a, on a computer. So constant pixel size will not have the same rate, make sure that uh, the sprites have the same ratio on all screens. So instead we can click on it and say scale with screen size. Now you can see it, the buttons got a little bigger and the tower panel went a little over the edge. Just to fix this, I can take the tower panel and make it a little smaller here so it aligns with the bottom edge here. I just swap the, the corner here and I wanna see if it does the same in the top. Yeah, it still does that. So now that I have set it to, um, let's see here, um, scale with screen size. Well, then if I play the game now, see that the bottom still have buttons still have the right size. So now they are exactly the size that I expected. Um, you could argue that you could put a, put a background here or something, some gray background, a little transparent maybe, to make it easier for us to see that these are, these are buttons, but we can always do that later. But for now, we will keep the buttons as this. So that's how you add the buttons to the UI. Next thing we are going to do is to click the buttons to place something. And we will also yeah, be able, would like to fix this little um, thing here where we can place one tower and then place another above it and then it goes over. So actually let's let's just fix this little bug here so that we don't get this uh, this this problem. So to fix that bug, we actually just need to change the sorting order. As you can see, if I place this tower first and this one behind it, um, the top one, as you can see, is actually, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, the top one is actually in front of the other one. And that's because of this ordering layer here. So if I would take the tower that is underneath it and change the layer to one, then it goes on top here. So we actually have to go to our code and use some value to change the actual order and layer on the sprites when we place them. And I think that we can actually use the Y value of each tile to set the sort order on the towers. So let's say if we have a tile here, it's row zero, right? So all towers on this row here will be placed on row on uh, sort order zero. And this is row one. So all towers here will have sort order one, and this is row two, so all towers here will have sort order two, and this is the Y value, right, Wyatt? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So we will base the sort order of each tower on the Y value on the tile it's standing on. Hope that makes sense, because you can see this is like zero, one, two, three, so three point zero in Y. So we'll use zero for these. Let's, um, Let's try to write some code here. We need to go to our scripts and we need to find our uh, tile script here. And when the script is open up, let's just move it into the screen here. We have a function called place tower. And here we simply need to set the sort order on, this, on the tower, right? So we have a tower uh, down. Let's see if we can find one, place one there. Uh, we have a tower here. So we need to access the sprite renderer on the tower and access the sort, uh, sorry, the order in layer on the tower and change that to the tiles Y value. So this is one, so it will change this one to one from the code. So this is what we're going to do from the code. So we actually have to grab the tower we're instantiating here. On this line of code here, we are grabbing the tower. Just do like this, so we can see something. On this line here, we're grabbing the tower. Uh, we're creating the tower. Let's just grab it. We can grab it by saying game object tower equals, and then just cast this to a game object, because this instantiates it, and then it throws it back. So we can just grab it here. So this tower here is equal to the tower we just placed on the ground. Then we can say tower dot get component, 
and as we just noticed we need to get the component called sprite renderer to access the order in layer so we say get component sprite renderer if I can spell correctly dot sort order equals grid position dot y okay so we are taking the grid position y grid position and setting the sort order equal to that so if we save this now let's try to test this and we rerun the game then if I click here and I find the tower then that fire tower has a order in layer as one but if I click underneath here then the new tower has order in layer as two so now we don't have the problem if I place this tower first and this one after well then the tower after will also be placed behind the other tower so now we don't have that problem where our towers are actually overlapping in some unexpected way actually as you can see here no matter what uh, way I'm placing the towers they will always be placed correctly that's one thing and other thing I'm a little concerned about is the fact that we have lots of towers here and these towers are taking up lots of space in our hierarchy right and that's not very good to take up that much space so instead I would like to make sure that every time I place a tower it will be put as a child object of the tile it's standing on so this tower here down here will actually be a child object of the tile that is standing on right here so it will be put under this to do this we will have to write one a couple of line of code here when we have created the tower we can say tower dot transform that set parent and then we can say transform so why can we do this well we just created a tower this tile script is sitting on the tile we just clicked on and to set a parent object of something something sorry we say tower dot transform to get the transform set parent and then we tell it what transform it needs to be a child of and the transform it needs to be a child of is the, is the tile we just clicked and to get the transform we simply write transform so if I click this tile right here well then it takes the tiles transform and put that tower underneath it so let's try to save this save there and jump back here and if I click this you'll see that now this sand has a fire tower as a child object so now every time we place a tower they will be put as child objects of their tiles the tile they belong to so we can just minimize the map and then we don't have this cluttered um, hierarchy anymore so that just makes it way nicer for us I think I'm going to end this video here so in this video we simply prepared our buttons and in the next video we will start using the buttons for placing our towers I'm um, sorry that I'm ending this before we're actually using the buttons but I can see the video is running very long and I think it's better to make some short videos so it's easier for you guys to uh, um, take breaks in between when you're working with this tutorial. So thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Also, if you really like my videos, I would appreciate if you can share my videos on uh, social media or on forum forums or something else um, because it would really help me get some more traffic to my site here. Um, so you can also support me. Um. Also remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page so all your support is very very important to me. And you can support me by, in different ways. You can support me by sharing my videos or you can support me on Patreon. If you support me on Patreon you can actually get all the scripts and all the assets for all the tools that I've ever created for YouTube. Or you can also support me by clicking the bottom link here and go to my page and get one of my projects as a standalone product. Again, thank you very much for watching.